Welcome back to another episode of Fact Checking. Um, thank you for all your comments on the last video regarding the claim by Dr. Gabrielle Lyon about falls being the number one cause of death in adults age 65 or over. As we showed, that's not the case. It's far from it. The leading causes of death in these populations are cardiovascular disease, so things like heart attack and stroke and cancer and, and dementia by a long, long way. So I'm glad that we were able to clear that up. And I really do appreciate Dr. Lyon commenting and acknowledging the error. Uh, I admire that. I think that's the sign of a professional. We should all be able to make errors and then uh, change our view, correct ourselves. I have heard Lane Norton say before, something that I think is quite wise, uh, wise words is that we, we should judge people not based on their intention, but based on their actions. So I think that's really important here. While I uh, admire Gabrielle's uh, acknowledgement, I'm hoping that we see some changes in the, the messaging. Plenty of you have said to me that I'm being too generous, that you think that the misrepresentation was purposeful. As I said, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. So we'll, we'll see if Dr. Lyon changes her communication of this information from here. That kind of brings me to the heart of this video, which is fact-checking another claim. And I think this gets more to the heart of what we're talking about here. And that is a claim that Dr. Gabrielle Lyon uh, has made. Again, I've seen this made in numerous places, but most recently on the Mark Bell Power Project. In SEMA, uh, show host, I believe, were one of, he asked a great question. Are there any drawbacks of eating too much protein? Are there any real drawbacks of eating meat? Because we do have some listeners that are plant-based. Is there any validity behind those beliefs or is it more so the morality aspect that people, like that's the where the point is? So let's hear what Dr. Lyon has to say. I personally have never seen any randomized control trials to say that eating red meat is an issue. It is a highly nutrient dense food. Dr. Lyon, clearly says that she's not aware of any randomized controlled trials that suggest we should be eating less red meat. Now, I wanna remind everyone that Dr. Lyon, in the previous video with her discussion with Mark Hyman, she herself said that we should really care most about what's killing people. And I wanna say that when we talk about aging, we have to think about what actually kills people. So let's go back to the statistics. Those statistics from the CDC looking at the United States population, show us that it is heart attacks and stroke, cardiovascular disease, those combined, heart attack and stroke, make up the most deaths. So really, that's what we should be concerned about. So I was really intrigued when Dr. Lyon was asked this question about, is there any evidence to suggest that eating red meat could be problematic in, in any ways? And she said, there's no randomized controlled trials to her knowledge. So maybe she just is not aware of them. And that's what I want to highlight today. So I have a few different pieces of evidence studies that I'd like to share with you. One is this systematic review. It's a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials looking at red meat consumption in comparison with various other diets and how they fare with regards to cardiovascular disease. This was published in 2019 in Circulation, which is an American Heart Association journal. So it's been available to sort of find and read for the last three years. Essentially, it's a meta-analysis. It combines 36 randomized controlled trials together and importantly looks at red meat compared to and sort of delineates between the comparison diet. And this is really, really important because you can sort of find evidence to, to show um, no negative effect for any food uh, if you want, if the comparison is not considered in that study. So here we get to, to look at how does red meat affect cardiovascular disease risk factors relative to other foods and other dietary patterns. And the conclusions from this paper are inconsistencies regarding the effects of red meat on cardiovascular disease risk factors are attributable in part to the composition of the comparison diet. Substituting red meat with high quality plant protein sources, but not with fish, we could come back to that if we want, or low co quality carbohydrates leads to more favorable changes in blood lipids and lipoproteins. 
So let me just read that out, paraphrase that. Substituting red meat with high quality plant protein sources leads to more favorable changes in blood, lipids, and lipoproteins. So that's randomized controlled trial evidence, 36 studies put together. And I should add that the majority of those studies, 24 out of those studies are looking at unprocessed red meat. That's from beef and from uh, lamb and even kangaroo is in there, which is generally considered a healthy or healthier sort of red meat. There are about five studies in there, which included some processed uh, meats, but by far the majority of the studies are looking at unprocessed red meat. There's been a more recent randomized controlled trial that's come out by Bergeron et al. And this study is really fascinating because they wanted to look in the context of a low saturated fat diet, is there any difference on cardiovascular disease risk factors, particularly ApoB, a measure of the number of atherogenic lipoproteins in your blood. That means the amount of particles in your blood that have the capacity to build up a fatty plaque in your artery. So they, they looked at, in the context of a low saturated fat diet, and that's important because they matched this across groups, is there any difference between red meat, white meat, and plant protein on ApoB? And certainly they found there was. Plant protein led to significantly lower ApoB levels. There was really no difference between red and white meat, which was an interesting uh, finding here. But remember, they matched saturated fat in this study and they still saw this reduction in ApoB in the plant protein section of the study. So in real life, when you swap red meat for plant protein, you actually get a reduction in saturated fat as well. The magnitude of this reduction in ApoB, which is the best predictor of cardiovascular disease risk that we have, would be even greater. So that's more randomized control trial evidence that I'm, I'm kind of hoping to bring to the surface here and share with Dr. Lyon. And all of this is corroborated by systematic reviews, meta-analyses of very large cohort studies. Here's one from the last year. This is looking at nearly 1.5 million subjects uh, across 12 different uh, observational studies. And again, in this study, they show significant uh, reduction in cardiovascular mortality. So these are observational. You get to look at people for a lot longer. You can look not just at risk factors, but you can look at actual deaths. They see significantly lower mortality, total mortality and cardiovascular mortality when substituting calories from red meat for plant protein. So there is a lot of evidence telling us, in fact, that yes, we should be reducing our consumption of calories from red meat. So back to Encima's earlier question. Are there any drawbacks of eating too much protein? Are there any real drawbacks of eating meat? Because we do have some listeners that are plant-based. Is there any validity behind those beliefs or is it more so the morality aspect that people, that like that's the where the point is? I personally have never seen any randomized control trials to say that eating red meat is an issue. I'm not sure how Dr. Lyon is, is coming to that conclusion. And maybe she just isn't aware of these studies, but I'm hoping that this puts them on her radar. And of course, it's all of this evidence that the latest guidelines, the American Heart Association 2021 Dietary Guidance, their scientific statement is informed by, and they clearly state, and this is reading word for word verbatim from these guidelines, choose healthy sources of protein, mostly plants. So with all of this evidence giving us key information to show us how we can reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease, heart, having a heart attack or a stroke, the leading cause of death. Remember, it was Gabrielle herself saying, that's what we should focus on. What is the top killer? I want to say that when we talk about aging, we have to think about what actually kills people. Well, it's cardiovascular disease. And we know swapping calories from red meat for foods like beans and lentils and chickpeas and tofu and nuts and seeds lowers risk of these events and premature death. So. What are we meant to do with all of this? Are we meant to just ignore it because people want to hear that eating more animal protein is good for them? I'm not sure. I, I just don't understand how we can reconcile that. It doesn't sit well with me, particularly having cardiovascular disease in my family and having friends and their families deal with people having heart attacks and stroke and from Dr. Lyon. Now that this information is in front of her, I would love for her to consider it and 
to I, either update her, her view on this or, or tell us what's wrong with this information. And once again, there's nothing personal in this against Dr. Lyon. I really don't like doing these sorts of, uh, of videos. I think they're important. I feel compelled to do them. I think that her intent is good, but as I mentioned earlier, I think we have to judge people on their actions and I'm hoping for this to be rather uh, constructive. So nothing against Dr. Lyon. I think she's got great intent and is no doubt really, really wanting to help improve people's health as am I. If you like these videos, let me know in the comments, share them with friends, that always helps. If I can do them better, let me know uh, what I could do. Give me some tips. I'm always open to constructive criticism. And if you just flat out hate them, um, you can let me know that too. Thanks.